Hey, thanks for stopping by Cask and Q or Whiskey and Barbecue Meat. I'm your host, Justin Lloyd, and today it's Dr. Pepper pulled pork. Stick around. Now, Dr. Pepper is supposed to have 23 different distinct flavors. I can't pick them all out, but I know I like them, and I think it's going to go great with pulled pork. So we're going to get the Blaze Kamado fired up to about 300 degrees. We're going to use cowboy lump charcoal, and we're also going to use some cherry wood chunks. Uh, I think that's going to add a great flavor and great color combined with this Dr. Pepper. Today we're rolling with some lump charcoal. This is oak and hickory from Cowboy Brand. We already have a little uh, lump charcoal left in the Blaze Kamado from our last cook, so we'll just top it off. I like to mix it up and uh, make sure it's evenly distributed. Time for some cherry wood chunks. There's two, three, four, let's do six. Really want to be sure we get that cherry wood color. And cherry wood is a mild flavor, so uh, I'm not I'm not worried about over smoking it. Like if it was mesquite or hickory, different story. Let's get our vent open on the bottom. Throw in a couple of our wax tumblers. I like to bury a few pieces of wood just so that it ignites later on in the cook. So that you make sure that you get all the smoky flavor that you want. Let's get our pork butt ready. Here we have almost a nine pound pork butt, and we'll flip it over to fat side up. That way when we cut it open, we're not cutting into the meat. We'll just hit that fat cap if we cut too far. This is a bone-in pork butt, 8.65 pounds. Not much of a fat cap on this one, so we don't have to do any trimming. But I do like to give it a score. I just think it looks cool. Plus it gets a lot of those flavors down into the meat a little further. Pork butts are very forgiving, so don't worry if you're not perfect on scoring. It's totally fine. Today we're gonna roll with our proprietary cask and cube blend, salt, pepper, onion, and garlic. We don't want anything with any sugar because that Dr. Pepper will be added later. And as you know, it has very high sugar content. If we have a bunch of sugar in our rub, it will burn. Be generous too. It's a large chunk of meat, it can take all this rub. This has a lot of pepper in it. It's more of a Texas uh, style rub that I do for beef, but I've gotten to where I like it on just about everything. Very simple, easy to make, and it's inexpensive comparatively to those rubs that you buy off the shelf. Money muscle. For those competition guys. Every now and then you gotta give this a good shake. This pepper is heavier than the salt, or is it the salt's heavier than the pepper? I can't remember. Either way, you gotta kind of shake it up and get it back to even distribution. All right, we are ready. So let's get this plate setter onto the Blaze Kamado. It's a steel plate. If you don't have a steel plate, you can use like a pizza pan or something like that. Maybe cover it with foil, makes it easier for cleanup. And my grates. We'll let that get nice and warm and we'll be back. You might be wondering where the Dr. Pepper comes in. Well, we're gonna do a foil boat. We're gonna make a kind of a boat out of aluminum foil and wrap it about halfway up around this pork butt. And then we're gonna pour the Dr. Pepper on after a good bark has been set. You don't wanna put the Dr. Pepper on before your bark is set because it'll wash off all your seasoning and that's not what we're looking for. All right, our Blaze Kamado is up to 300. We're gonna cook hot and fast today. Let's get this pork butt on. We're going fat side up. So we're gonna let this go for three hours. We're not gonna even take a look at it. It's been three hours since we put our pork butt on and that's what we got. 
That bark is starting to set. That fat has started to split. We've got great color. So uh, I'd say it's time to go ahead and make ourselves a foil boat. I have two layers of heavy duty aluminum foil. Make sure you get the heavy duty stuff. Don't buy anything else. Very easy, nothing to it. Just bring the corners in, roll it up. All right, foil boat. Next, Dr. Pepper. So what this allows for is to get those flavors down into the pork butt. So while we put it back on the smoker, the smoke will mix with that Dr. Pepper and it's just a magical flavor in my opinion. It, you have the cherry wood smoke, you have the pepper from the Dr. Pepper, <laughs> you have the vanilla. I mean, you just got all kinds of cool stuff going on there. And instead of wrapping it completely and letting this just t turn to mush as it tends to do when you wrap an aluminum foil, this kind of allows you to have a bark and have that jus that you want at the very end. So let's get this back on the Kamado. So now we're just gonna let this go. Uh, it's still at 300, maybe 325. We'll just let it go for another couple hours and then we'll come back and check temperature. And I'll uh, put a probe in here and we'll monitor the temperature throughout the rest of the cook. So I'd like to thank Inkbird for sending me this Bluetooth Wi-Fi smart barbecue thermometer. Let's get it open and see what it looks like. Instruction manual. Oh wow, that's really cool looking. Let's see what we have here. Cable. Ah, some holders. That's where you put the probes. They sent us a couple probes with this. Nice. Ah, more than a couple. Yeah, nice. We got four. How about that? Very cool. And directions. Let's see. Take that off. All right, fancy. Let's get this plugged in. Now, I think it's really important to have a good thermometer, uh, especially on a long cook. It's just gonna let you kind of know where you stand, what your temperatures are looking like, how your pit is operating. All right, let's get this plugged in, I guess, into port four. All right, I downloaded the Inkbird app to make sure that this thing is working the way it needs to work. All right, now I'll go ahead and put this probe right in there to measure the ambient temperature of the pit. The uh, pork butt is looking delicious and we're gonna continue for probably about three more hours. We'll be back. Okay, we're eight hours in on this pork butt. Let's take a look. Oh man, that is looking amazing. Look at that bark. That thing's ready to shred. Let's get to it. So you can see all that jus that settled at the bottom. That Dr. Pepper pulled pork is gonna be delicious. We're gonna let that rest for about 30 minutes and then we're gonna shred it. Okay, so the internal temperature on this pork butt is about 205. Let's shred it. Man, this Dr. Pepper, <laughs> just look at that. Let's just get into this and just pandemonium. I mean, look at that. You don't get, I mean, that's just clean off the bone. I didn't have to pull that off. That's crazy. Oh, buddy. Check that out. If that's not money, I don't know what is. Man. We got that good crust on the top from that fat cap. And that Dr. Pepper jus. Man, I'll tell you what. This is something special. Look at that. Oh, dude. If you don't like that, then there's something wrong with you. I gotta take a bite. Oh my goodness, lots of flavor. Amazing. Absolutely phenomenal. Look at this, dude. Look, look how tender that is. Yeah, all you gotta do 
Let's get your uh, your lined gloves, nitro gloves, whatever you call them, and go to town. Let's see what we got here. Look at the Jew on that. I mean, it's just incredible. Look how juicy that is. All right, we're going to get a piece right here. Check this out. Man, that is phenomenal. You got to try this. We're going to make sandwiches with this, but I got to go in for one of these awesome pieces right here. <laughs> mm -mm 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 -mm. Dr. Pepper pulled pork is where it's at. Hey, thanks for sticking around. We'll see you next time.